Hey. And let's look at our question. We've got two cars. First off, a couple quick questions for you. Looking at the graph, you see car A, you see car B. Which car is going faster? Which car is going faster? Only one hand? Ricky. Car B. Car B. He says, why do you say car B? Why, why does he say car B, folks? What do you think, Anthony? It's got a deeper slope, or uh, a steeper slope than uh, car A. Awesome. That works very well. So it is a steeper slope. Nicely done. So it is traveling faster. A uh, couple more questions here. How about which car starts first? Which car begins moving first? Andrew. Car A, how do you know? Awesome. So at zero and car B starting, how long after? How long after is car B starting? Yes, sir. Awesome. For car A, is that a direct or partial variation? Direct or partial variation? I know. That is a direct partial. Which car was I talking about? I can't remember. Car A, you said, is direct. How do you know it's direct? Because it starts with the origin. Awesome. How about car B? It starts on that x-axis as well. Is that also direct? Is that also direct? Yes. It's partial. It is partial. How do you know it's partial, sir? It doesn't start at zero. Awesome. Check this out, folks. If I extend, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I know it's not zooming in up there. But if I extend my y-axis, notice this is negative in this area right here. These are negatives, okay? Doesn't really make sense. I guess it, it could if we go backwards, right? We're going negative distance. So I could extend that y-axis, and if I extend car B, so here's car B, if I extend that, you'll notice that it does hit the y-axis, except not at the origin, okay? So you can always do that. You can extend your axes, you can extend your lines, okay? So let's get to part A. It says, which one has the greater speed and by how much? We know which one has the greater speed. How am I going to determine by how much? What could I do? Got to see some new hands. New hands. Lucas. Don't be nervous. They're not evaluating you. They're evaluating me. What does difference mean? You don't have to say it the way we were saying it yesterday. Like, what are you going to actually do? Subtract. Subtract. So what are we subtracting? Oh, awesome. So we're going to subtract along the x-axis for our run. Very good. And know what I'm going to do? I'm going to zoom in on this graph real quick here. Look at this. I've got the graph. We know there's subtraction involved. Now, first things first, which car do you guys want to find the rate of change of first or the speed? Let's pick one. What do you think? Graham, which one do you want to do? Car B. Car B, he says. So let's look at car B. Here it is. How could I then use the method we used for finding slope by subtracting the y's, subtracting the x's? Remember, we called it the difference in the y, the difference in the x. How can I do it in this particular case? What could I do? And remember, guys, in math, there's usually more than one way to do it. So where would I begin? Where would be a good part or a good point on the line to begin? What do you think, Hassan? Find the rising of run. Awesome. So where would I begin from, though? Um, and it doesn't have to be Hassan, but where would I start? This is one of the problems that a lot of people have. They go, I know how to do rise over run, but where do I start? Because I could start rise over run from here. I do this, and I go, okay, and I just start counting down. Hey, miss, come on in. And then I'm on the line. But I don't think that's going to work. What do you guys think? Come on in. I'm going to go. But you're going to go? Like your gray shirt today. Thank you. I think it shrunk in the wash a little bit, though. Got to pull it down okay. a little bit. However, let's look back at car B, folks. I got a line. I need to find the slope. Remember we got to start on the line, and we got to end at the line again. So let's pick a point on car B's line to begin. Where do you want to start? What do you think? Where do you want to start? What do you think, Eric? Uh, one hour in to the job. Awesome. So he says one hour in. So are you, do you mean like where we started, like right here? Yeah. Awesome. He says start right there. Guys, it's a great point to start. Great point to start. However, I do have something 
to ask you. I need everybody's eyes up at the screen. See where Eric picked that point? Take a look at that thing. Something special about that point. Because guess what? If I go, hey, Danielle, if I want to pick this point right there, will that point also work? She says no. What do you guys think? Thumbs up or down? Will that point work? Thumbs up? Can I use that point to, to do rise over run? How many thumbs down? That point will not work. See some thumbs, and then I see probably the rest maybe a bit of, of uncertainty. What are you thinking? Let's hear something. Yes? Uh, I, I think it probably could work, but you would need to find the exact measurement on the other side of the line to compare the rise over run. Awesome. I really like that. Guys, if I look right here, I'm not at an exact point on that line. And if I get right up there, you can see here how much time, how much time has passed where this point is, about, what do you think? How much time? Mm -hmm. Hour and a half? Do I know that for certain? I don't. However, when I start here, where Ricky was mentioning earlier, Ricky said, you know what? Right there. Let's start there. Do I know how much time is, has passed? I know it's exactly one hour. So that's a great point to use. I could use this one. However, it's likely that my answer will not be exact. Okay? So it'll still work for an approximation. How about another point? Remember, I got to do rise over run. So that means I got to go up and I got to go back over to get to the line somehow. Pick another point on that line so that we can get back to the line. What's another nice and I, I want to say almost exact point that we can use? What do you think? Sophia? Yeah, the second point on my um, card being, oh, six, uh, 480. Awesome. They've kind of helped you out, right? They're giving you a point almost saying, hey, guys, pick me, right? Please. However, could I pick a different point? Is there any other that look like it's exact? Like if I go through here? Any others that look like it might be exact? What do you think? Adam? Three hours at 180. Three hours at 180 looks pretty close. I, I might say it actually might be just to the side. It might be hard to see where you're at. However, that probably would work. But it seems like these would be the two logical ones to use. Okay? So now if I'm doing my rise over run, folks, remember the rise is subtracting the y values. So all I want to do here, folks, for people that didn't catch that yesterday, is I want to take this y value, where it lines up here, and I want to subtract it from that y value. What is my rise in this particular case? What is the rise, Anthony? Oh, geez, sorry. I'm I calling you that all year, eh? Sorry, Andrew, go ahead. Awesome. So essentially, we're taking 480 minus 0 or just 480. Big mistake that I might see, folks, and I guarantee you at least one of you are going to fall into this trap on the test. Ready for this? Ready? You don't want to do this. A lot of people will do this. They start here and they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's the rise. They say it's 8 because there's 8 boxes. But guess what? Each box is 60. Okay? You've got to count with the actual scale. Have you guys seen that mistake before? I've seen it. I've seen it. I've actually corrected tests and made the same mistake myself. So make sure you don't do that. How about the run? What's the run going to look like, my friends? How, what's the run going to look like? Remembering we're starting here and heading all the way over. So I want to look at my X to that X right there. What's my run going to be? Yes, sir. Awesome. So on top, I've got 480 kilometers. I've got five hours. Why is this a rate and not a ratio? What did we talk about yesterday? Why is that a rate and not a ratio? Somebody knew I thought I saw a hand over there. Nope. Megan bailed. She said no. How about Andrew Brown? Different units. Nicely done. So that's why that thing is a rate instead of a ratio. Remember, if it's girls and boys, they're both human. Here, kilometers and hours, distance and time, they are two different units. So that's our rate of change. Can I simplify that? Let's think for a second. What's 500 divided by 5? 500 divided by 5. It's obviously 100. It is obviously 100. So is this car going faster or slower than 100 kilometers per hour? Faster or slower? 
slower. What is the exact amount? Yes? 96. 96 kilometers per hour. Let's do it for the other car. Let's look at car A for a second. And I'm just going to erase this little bit here, this little ditty. I need you to pick me a good point, folks. Let's look at car A for a second. Who's got two points to pick for car A? Two points. Anthony. The beginning point at zero. Awesome. And the uh, other point at 360 kilometers. Awesome. Can you give me a coordinate for that last point, folks? Who's got a coordinate for that? So if I had to describe the X and the Y value. Awesome. Six, 360 is right there. Nicely done. Let's do the same thing. How about the rise? If I subtract my Y's for the rise, I think that does rhyme. Does it not? No? Rise for the Y's? No? Okay. Here we go. How about that? Here we go. There's my Y. Here's my starting Y. What is my rise in this case? What is my rise... What is my rise? Adam. 360. Nice. 360. How about the run? What's the run going to be? Ricky. Six. He says six. Let's double check here. We start here. We go all the way to six. And guess what? Six minus zero is six. And we're in good shape. So notice how we're using the formula without necessarily writing out that formula. I really don't care if you write it out. However, we just want to make sure that you know not to just count boxes all the time. What's 360 divided by 6? First off, before you go, whoa, that's too big, what's 36 divided by 6? Yes, sir. 6. six. What's 360 divided by 6? Nice. Now, when I look at these two answers, does that make sense? Does the car with the steeper line have the faster speed? What do you think? Car with the steeper line have the fastest speed? Hassan? It does. Have I answered the question completely? What's the question asking? Sophia? Now we have to subtract 96 by 60 to get 36, and that will be the difference in between the two car speeds. Awesome. So remember, guys, when you're done a long question, make sure you go back and look at what it actually asked me. It said, which one has the greater speed? and by how much. So you need that sentence, just like Sophia said. So we know that car, it looks like car B is the faster car. Subtract their two speeds, and we see that it's by 36 kilometers an hour. Okay, so that's very important for part A. How about part B, a quick little chat about the point of intersection. Where is the point of intersection on this graph? Where is it? Where would you say the two lines intersect? What do you think? Graham? Uh, three on the t-axis and 180 on the d-axis. Awesome. So if we go over to three and go up to 180, it looks like that's our point of intersection right there. What does that mean in this case? If I said explain what the point of intersection means, what does it tell me when I just look really quickly at the graph? What does it tell me? Anybody new? Mr. Brown? When the cars pass each other. Nicely done. So when they're at that point, they are at the exact same spot, okay, distance-wise. They're not necessarily on top of each other, but they are both 180 kilometers from home, okay, and they do it at the same All right, very good, and we will wrap that question up. Should I be keeping in the conversation with Miss Baggio? Should that stay in the video? Do you think YouTube would, would benefit from that conversation? Excellent. It's done. The hammer's down. Enjoy.